He just walked past Scott Barr and showed him his gold medal. If confidence were a book, <laughs> he'd be the Library of Congress. He'll have to go at it again next week, I'll tell you that. That Bacon will be back for him. Well, he'll probably want to walk past you next week. <laughs> There's a lateral drop by Kevin Smith. He's got Kloiber in trouble. First period is owned by Kevin Smith. He's got the double grapevine oh. in. This could be the fall. He's got to pick up on the head of Kloiber. Kloiber very strong underneath. A lot of time, the 104 on the clock. You don't want Kevin Smith on top of you for more than a minute. He's falling off to the side now. He's going to pick up at least five. We know that. There's three. He comes at you early, and he comes at you often. The first period, he is always a state championship caliber wrestler. The other two periods, he is always very, very good. The shoulder of Kloiber appears to have been injured. And the rest of his body's a little sore, Yeah, too. Smith has jumped out to a 7-1 score. What is that strange thing sticking out of uh, that bag? To fully understand it, you have to fully understand Kevin Smith. We're talking about the uh, right-hand corner there by the bag. We don't believe anyone understands fully Kevin Smith, but before he goes out, he takes that little doll and rubs it between his hands, and I think he kisses it on the forehead. <laughs> and, hey... They ought to get some for the rest of the team, too. That doll looks like it's about 0-28 on the year. <laughs> that a rough, he's, rough season. He sees, uh, he's sees. he got a lot of those little things. He's got some decorations on his headgear, and I know he kisses the, the little red band he has around his ankle before he puts it on. And you know wrestlers. That's it. They're like place kickers in football. They're like volleyball players. They do strange things. They have a lot of strange customs, and... Uh, He's got a hairy little doll. Well, I, I've worked with you long enough to agree that wrestlers are a strange breed. 7-1 the score here, 47 seconds to go in the first period. As Kevin Smith allows Jeff Kloiber to get up. Kloiber appeared, appeared to be still shaken up a little bit with his right shoulder. I think he is favoring that a little bit. He just about reached for it there as they were on their feet, uh, as if to rub it a little bit. He is hurting. He looks over to his coach, John Tagus, and says, Coach, I'm in pain. He's hurt. Yeah, he I is really hurt. I think that'll end it right there. I think that'll be a default win for Kevin Smith. Uh, this is not the time to be a hero. You got next week to think about. Donnie Rohn looking for two points on the takedown. He's looking for two back points. The rule is, if back points are imminent, Two are awarded. Well, he has to get the takedown first. They were in neutral. So he's probably looking for four. I don't think it'll matter. I think we're going to end it right here. I don't think uh, John Tagus will put Jeff Kloiber out there unless Jeff Kloiber is 100% bent on getting back out against Kevin Smith. Scott, let's talk a little bit about uh, the rules now uh, as far as the default is concerned. Default it just is simply as a fall. Counts as the same as a fall. It'll be an extra two points. See another one of those strange little customs Kevin Smith has. If we can get a shot of him, he's wearing his headgear sideways, and he does that quite often. If we can get, yeah, I think we're going to get lining up a shot of Kevin Smith right now. See, he's got the, the earpieces front and rear instead of side and side. Well, see, so you assume the headpiece is sideways. He may have twisted his head. He twisted. <laughs> Kev, I think we have the default here. Kevin is a character, and he's going to be a district champion. And boy, what a season he has had to this point. And our sympathy go out to Jeff Kloiber. As the default will come at 1 minute and 30 seconds, your district champion, 29 and 0, Northampton's Kevin Smith. He becomes the third Northampton District Champion. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now is the ideal time for planting those trees and shrubs you've been wanting. At the Palmer Nursery, Sam Rizzolino and his family will be happy to give you their personal attention for all your landscaping needs. Palmer Nursery specializes in distinctive landscaping and high seeded lawns for both commercial and residential properties. Call the Palmer Nursery and let Sam give you a free estimate. Or stop by 
at the corner of Nazareth and Newburgh Roads in Palmer. Stop by, I'll take a good care of you. Join Twin County Cable 4 Sports every week for the most comprehensive coverage of local high school basketball, wrestling, and District 11 events. That's Twin County Cable 4 Sports. Tuesday night at 9, it's doubleheader basketball action. Game 1, the 4A girls, Easton versus Central, followed by AAA boys, Southern Lehigh versus Central Catholic. That's 9 o'clock Tuesday on Cable 4 Sports. You are viewing Twin County Cable 4, your choice for community programming in the Lehigh Valley. All right, it's 189 pounds. That's coming up next as you see the fans standing for Brian Chamberlain as the gold medal going around his neck. A packed house, some of the people starting to leave as some of their wrestlers has, have finished up for the night. To recap, Allen has a champ, Nazareth has two, Freedom has one, Northampton three, Parkland one, and Easton three. At 189, we've got ourselves an undefeated wrestler in Doug Kamenow of Bangor. Doug, 27 and 0, a senior. He was the 88 Christmas City champion, regional runner-up last year. His coach is Jeff Longacre against the number two seed, Rich Evans from Central Catholic. He's undefeated too at 13, 0 and 1. He's a junior under Bob Volpe. He was first in the Governor Mifflin Tournament, two-time Allentown School District champion, second in districts last year, third in regionals last year. It is Central's Rich Evans against Bangor's Doug Kamenow. And he's also on the prestigious preseason picks list. Good-looking junior. That made his year. They beg all summer. It's, it's sad. Evans got here with a very impressive pin over Blue Mountain. Steve Garris. Garris was pinned in one minute and 30 seconds. Kamenow beat Paul Labar of Stroudsburg by a 16 to nine score. Garris went on to take a fourth place. Scott McIntyre of Easton came back through the loser's bracket to take a third. I think all the Northampton fans are leaving. They don't have any wrestlers left, and I guess they just wrapped up second place as a team since they had the default and the pin. I believe you are right. As Easton has three champions, they don't have anybody left. And the Easton group had a 13-5 decision. The Rizzolino 14-12. And I know I can find the other one, Moss Grades. A fall at 547. But that is completely unofficial because the tech two, fall for two things I put on the same plane are quantum physics and tournament scoring. <laughs> you never know until they come out with all the halves and points and a halves and twos and placement points because they award some placement points before the finals. And then if you win, you get four extras because you took first and that's worth 16 instead of 12, which you were guaranteed when you came into the finals. It's crazy, but I'm pretty sure Northampton couldn't lose with the same amount of champions as Easton. Notice he said pretty sure. 30 seconds to go in the first period. No score. 189 pounds. Ted Mikes will have it first thing tomorrow on your doorstep. So we don't want you to uh, shut your TV off because we got pretty interesting heavyweight coming your way. Damian Dugan of Allen. He's a rather exciting young man to watch as he'll take on the number one seed, Ed Watto. And then right after that, you Allen fans, who I'm sure will stay with us anyway, Allen Parkland, basketball. Liberty has advanced already. We gave you that one. Liberty beats East Stroudsburg, 63, or 69-63. Lafayette has advanced. Lehigh has lost. I don't know. We're giving you all the local sports of the day. First period ends 0-0, zero, zero, and that's the first 0-0 zero, zero first period we have had since 112 and 119 pounds. A lot of wrestling. A lot of wrestling. There you get a look at... Who is that? Good question. That that's... is uh, Brad Volpe? No, that's the assistant coach to Volpe. We didn't get the right coach. All right. 
Coach Volpe's. That's I what guess. happens when you don't get exposure on Sports 4. Oh. Central Catholic is a real up-and-coming team. They scored a lot of points against Northampton and Phillipsburg and Easton. They did real well this year. They had a couple of real blue chippers. Richie Evans, one of them. Sean Seagreaves, another. Uh, the young Volpe, another. And they just had a real nice season. They may be seventh or eighth in this district tournament. Escape for Evans. He leads 1-0. situation that's what Pete Kaiser called I believe this is Pete Kaiser's final officiating of his career tonight I don't think he's going on the regionals but I'm not sure if that's the case I think Gene well he may be I know Gene Wass is going uh, completely through with being states coming out with a takedown here District 11 fans will miss Pete Kaiser. He's been around for a lot of years. Escape by Evans. We're tied at two. I don't think anyone uh, has any problems knowing who Pete Kaiser is, the way he fills out a wrestling <laughs> referee's shirt. And that ain't a small, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he was officiating when I was wrestling, and that was started in high school uh, 12 years ago. So he's been around at least that, and he was one of the top officials then. So I'd have to say 17 or 18 years or so, Pete Kaiser's been blowing the whistle. And this is not an easy sport to officiate. It is you against the mob. <laughs> Four seconds now. We're tied at 2-2. Second period, 189 pounds. Doug coming out of Bangor. Rich Evans of Allentown Central Catholic. Both looking for their first district champion of 89. There you see the district champion at 171, Kevin Smith. And there you see his assistant coach. <laughs> I thought Bob was doing the game. <laughs> Those little dolls used to be popular a number of years ago, didn't they? Are they the troll dolls? I, I forget what they're called, but I remember seeing them. He used to get them out of gum machines and everything. We've got a reversal by Kamenow, and he's got a cradle locked up. Evan slips out of it. Kamenow leads 4-2. Certainly hope that injury to Kloiber isn't anything more than maybe a pulled muscle in the shoulder, which can be painful enough. But if that's a torn muscle or, or something, uh, tendons or ligaments or something, you hate to see that. But he is a junior. Kloiber will be back next year. Escape there, Scott, by Evans, and he only trails by one at one minute and ten seconds to go. And there we have heads banged as coming out, got nailed right in the forehead. Didn't seem to bother Rich Evans very much, however. But you're right, we don't uh, want to see Kloiber not move on. That was a double negative we don't like to use, but Kloiber looking to go into regionals next week as the number two out of the district. A reminder again, next week we will have basketball for you. We'll have a week at Stable Arena. We'll be on with a doubleheader, double header, we believe, on Tuesday night, a doubleheader Wednesday night. A doubleheader Friday night, and we think we'll probably have a quadruple for you on Saturday, two in the afternoon, two at night. We'll bring them all for you on Saturday, probably starting around six o'clock or so. But just stay tuned to Cable Four, and we'll let you know when our games will be on. Our annual four on four, starting at six o'clock next Saturday. Yes, we have one-on-ones and two-on-ones in wrestling, but four on four. Four on four. We have definitely settled in 
Yes, since the uh, antics up to, I guess, about 160 was the dividing line right there. Well, we've had just about everything tonight. No yeah. overtimes. We had a default, no overtimes. We've come close to that. And there were a lot of overtimes in the tournament. Quite a number of semifinals went into overtime. We went right down. I think I heard a criteria six deciding about a, a few criteria fives. We've had a record setting five falls tonight. Unofficial record or is that researched? Okay, four, documented. four falls and a tech fall. Kamiyao has to slip the arm through for a, another takedown. If Evans can gain inside control, he's got it. Pete Kaiser says, yes, that's two. Kind of tentative. Frank Jordan says, oh, yes, he was inside control. Doug Kalina didn't see it. Yes, he got it. Yeah, oh, yeah. out trail, 5-4. The question was, was Kamiyao's leg tied up inside? Wasn't, I'm sorry, wasn't whether Kamina's leg was tied up inside, but whether inside control was established by Evans. I wonder who that is. I'll tell you, that is Jeff Longacre. He is hot. 5-4 the score, 18 seconds to go. I don't think it'll end this way. Kamina stands. Evans trying to be, as the escaper tied at five, coming out in deep. And not only that, Doug Kalina, the match judge, saw a locked hands call. Nothing, we're gonna go overtime. No, we locked won't. Hands. No, we won't. Locked hands. Doug Kalina saw locked hands. He will tell the official he had the angle on it. The whole crowd saw it. This could be a tough call. Well, now they're going to talk about it, and these three guys right here may decide the district championship. I think what we're going to say here is that a Matt judge can't do that. They're going to call Gene Wass over and say, can a Matt judge see something that the head official did not? Gene Wass is the head official of the entire tournament. I'm unclear on it myself. If Doug Kalina can call it, Tommy now is the winner. Pete Kaiser's going over to talk to Bob Volpe. And then I'm sure I'll come over to talk to Jeff Longacre. I think we're going to come back and start wrestling. No, we're not. We're going to come shake hands. They didn't award any points. Yes, they did. They awarded it to Doug Tommy now on locked hands. There it is, 6-5. It was right in front of Doug Kalina that the wrestlers were turned that way, and Pete Kaiser had to catch up to them. Doug Kalina called it. He saw it. And that is the proper call, evidently. Well, we'll evidently find out. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now is the ideal time for planting those trees and shrubs you've been wanting. At the Palmer Nursery, Sam Rizzolino and his family will be happy to give you their personal attention for all your landscaping needs. Palmer Nursery specializes in distinctive landscaping and high seeded lawns for both commercial and residential properties. Call the Palmer Nursery and let Sam give you a free estimate. Or stop by at the corner of Nazareth and Newburgh Roads in Palmer. Stop by, I'll take a good care of you. Snow emergency in Catasauqua. Residents asked to move their cars on west side of Front Street, west side of 2nd Street, north side of Pine Street, the north side of Bridge Street, the west side of 14th Street, and the west side of St. John Street. Well, we are back, and believe it or not, we are at a heavyweight already, as this night is moved along very, very quickly as you get a look at wrestlers receiving their awards for... 171 pounds. Of course, Kevin Smith, the champion. Kloiber, second. Kapanka of Nazareth, third. And Chris Gardner was fourth. Gardner from Pocono Mountain. Check it, from Pottsville. We're going to go to heavyweight. It will be Ed Watto of Pocono Mountain, 23 and 3 on the year, a senior. Second in the districts last year. He was the Tunk Hannock champion this year, two time Centennial League champion. He's seated number one. 
against Damian Dugan of Allen. His coach is Ron Trexler, of course, 23 and 5 on the year. He is a junior. He was the Allentown School District champion of 1988. It's Damian Dugan of Allen against Ed Watto of Pocono Mountain. And Scott Barr, let's reflect back at 189 pounds as Doug Kaminow awarded a 6-5 victory, and now you know why. I'm going to rent a bus over to the referee's bench and back. The question was not ever, should we call the locked hands or not? The question was, was there time that had to be re-wrestled? The rule book has a provision for what's called bad time when something can be corrected and re-wrestled. That's why Gene Wasp was called over to ask him, is this considered bad time? In other words, once the locked hands were locked, should the clock have stopped? Uh, should, yes, should the clock have stopped? Or uh, there's a takedown by Damian Dugan. Or Kalina had, Doug Kalina had signaled locked hands. John, or Pete Kaiser had not called it. Should we re-wrestle the last eight seconds or so to allow Rich Evans to counter that? The answer was no, because it was an ongoing situation. You have to allow time for the escape to continue. It was a good call. And again, I have to emphasize, the question was never whether the one point should be allowed. That was absolute and determined from the moment Doug Kalina saw it. The question was simply, should we re-rest the last six seconds? Gene Wass made that decision and said no. Watto with the escape. Dugan leads two to one and a good job of reporting. Well, Scott hustled over there and got the explanation for us. 45 seconds now to go in the first period. This is the heavyweight contest as Bangor has themselves a district champion. And what makes that an easy job for me, as soon as I got there, I didn't ask any questions. The officials came right to me. They know they're misunderstood. They wanted to make it perfectly clear exactly what was going on. Oh, another good takedown by Dugan. You got to figure him to do that. I mean, if you got 270 pounds coming at you, what are you going to do to stop it? Eduardo's not doing anything on the bottom right now. I know Dugan impressed you this afternoon when he beat Mike Renock of Northampton in the second seed, 8-6. to six. Eduardo had to go overtime with Loyal Ricks of Easton. As it was 1-1, it ended up 3-3. And again, the criteria there, Scott, I forget exactly what they went to. I think it was an escape. I think they were criteria four. I think it was a reversal. I believe you're right. It was a reversal. That Watto got on Ricks. But Dugan wrestled very tough for the first period and a half or two periods. But he didn't slow up quite a bit in the third period. Well, he leads 4-1 right now after one period. Watto in the semifinals, Scott, wore a mask. One of those masks to protect your face. He is not wearing it here in the finals. And I don't see any marks on his face or a black eye or cuts or anything that may have needed protection. Ed Watto, of course, an outstanding football player at Pocono Mountain. They were the district champions this year, and Ed Watto is uh, heading for a football scholarship, and I, it slips my mind exactly where he'll be going. Well, he was also the oh. Lehigh Valley Scholar Athlete of the Year, I believe. An outstanding accomplishment. Escape by Dugan. He now leads 5-1. We have had seven different schools pick up a district champion so far tonight. Dugan had three takedowns against Mike Renock. And during the year, Renock handled Watto very easily in a dual meet. Gene Wass out there calls stalemate. Gene will probably start making them mix it up a little bit. He is not too shy about calling cautions stalling warnings and a lot of people are calling the heavyweight division a weak one and indeed it shapes up that way if you compare seating points to other weight classes but it is highly competitive especially when you talk about the top four Watto, Dugan, Renock and Ricks they were very very close there's a stalling call against both wrestlers I bet we can count on one hand the number of stalling calls we've had tonight there have not been many and we just used two fingers on that call. There's a headlock attempt by Dugan. Throws Watto off the mat. And I think that's called Big Mo when you get those two guys rolling along. Scott, as I quickly look over our sheet, there was only one stalling point awarded tonight, and that was awarded to Dave Foley against Ray Mark Ulix at 119 pounds. No, there was another one. Chad Billy uh, was called for stalling at 103 pounds. So we have exactly five stalling calls tonight, and two of them just took place here, and we'll get more. I'm sure, because this is how this one's shaping up. Ed Watto, I think, pacing himself a little bit. And unless you have an unusual hand, that is counting them on one hand. 
Five one the score. Watto is hurt. He bangs his right knee. Damian Dugan is possessed. He is really going after it. Didn't have a fabulous season. He's just a junior. Came in at 20 and five, but I think a lot of those wins were just because he was so big. I mean, he's got to go 270. He makes Eduardo look like a middleweight. Allen looking for a bookend district title as they won at 103 pounds, the first bout of the evening, and trying to win at the last bout of the evening. And of course, there are awards coming up. Coach of the Year, the team championships. That's going to go to Nazareth. The Pinner Award and the Most Valuable Wrestler Award. It is not going to be easy to pick a Most Valuable Wrestler. I thought we were going to be looking at another default here, but the headgear is getting buckled up once again. Damian Dugan is ready to come back to the center. And now Watto will take the bottom, which is where he belongs. Watto was district runner-up last year to Tim Samick, who went on to be state runner-up from West Hazleton, I think. Yes, it was. And I have a feeling we are going to see a default here, Scott. Yeah, I think that is the case. Again, you don't want to be a hero in district finals. He's down 7-1. The team title is not at stake. I think we're going to see the ethyl chloride come out, and I think we're going to decide this one. She hasn't been too active tonight. Ethel has stayed right at home. Yes. And the crowd that has decided to remain, and it's rather sizable, I'm sure, has remained to hear who are the award winners. I'm going to force you into a prediction, Gary. Who's the outstanding wrestler? Well, I, in all honesty, Scott, I don't know if I could pick one. Uh, I'm very glad that we're not part of uh, the voting. I mean, you know, you start start right away with Brad Sillen Perry as he uh, is a defending state champion and he pins tonight a, a great wrestler in Tossie in 5'10". And you don't have to look too much further to go to Dave Foley who wins his third consecutive district championship by a 5-3 score. And uh, we'll pick this up a little bit as we get back to the action as Damian Dugan gets himself two near fall points. He now leads 9-1. And there's, this could be the fall if Damian Dugan gets himself righted. Oh, and we're at the buzzer. He'll get two more, Scott. And now he'll lead 11-1. I picked my heavyweight for next year. <laughs> As we were talking about the MVP, you know, Pacone builds up a big lead, 8-2 over uh, Saranowski, and all of a sudden Don takes him down. Boom, he's on his back, and the match is over. So Saranowski has to be considered. Darren Roth gets a pin at 157. The quickest pin of the night, he's got to be considered. You That's got Moss Grays, who's had just a fabulous tournament. He gets a tech fall tonight. And Waddle again opposition. is hurt. That's over quality opposition. My pick is gonna be Darren Roth. I'm gonna go with him because of the quality of opposition, because of the, the quickness of the fall, because of the way he performed in semifinals. I'm taking Darren Roth. Okay, just let, we'll just mention the other possibilities. DeSoro goes to 30 and 0. You got to think about him. Mike Miller, he gets a pin. You got to think about him. Rizzolino, against quality competition, comes back with a tremendous effort to win. Chamberlain, he's had a great year, 29 and one. Tough matchup against Marchetti. He wins that one. How can you disregard Kevin Smith? He probably got hurt because it ends up being a default. That's, uh, I think you're absolutely right. In fact, by defaulting, I think Jeff Kloiber wins the pinner award which is kind of ironic, but, uh, and the default, not his fault, <laughs> so to speak, I suppose. Yeah. I'm gonna take Darren Roth. All right. I think if I had a vote, I'd put him on it. And it'll be interesting to see how this whole thing shakes out once it's all said and done. And coach of the year. Well, if I had a vote, I'm gonna give you my vote. Okay. If I had a vote, it'd be Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, okay. Not a bad pick. Not, I mean, how can you say no? He had two falls in 45 seconds. No one touched the guy. Kevin has uh, had a fall in 20 seconds, a fall in 25 seconds. He gets a 16-3 decision in the semis and wins by default in a minute and 30 seconds. He's my pick. Takes him longer than that to eat lunch. That's for crying out loud. <laughs> hey, just to comb the doll's hair. 12-1, <laughs> Damian Dugan has been all over Ed Watto. 
Ed hanging in there gamely. I think more than anything, this afternoon's semifinal match just pumped an awful lot of confidence into the head of Damian Dugan. Yeah, he's a five-time loser this year, 23 and five, but he's been tough here in the tournament. Had a fall in 28 seconds, a 10-1 win, and an 8-6 win.